spirit, we could say, you know, has a great perspective, knows in every singing circumstance what would be most helpful. Talk about a bird's eye view, this is like a spirit's eye view. Out of the bubble. Out of the bubble, yeah. To, to, and to be able to guide you to, to pop all your bubbles or to leave the bubble, that's, there couldn't be anything more helpful. But it's interesting with that. So, in one sense, you know, that you can see where the ego resistance can really rear up with, with that voice. It still offered instructions. You know, one time she said, take, take my fear away, and the voice said, I can't do that, because you set it up. And I can help you with the conditions that you set up. But Jesus said, if I, if I took your fear away, I would be interfering with the most basic law of cause and effect, trying to step between your thoughts and their effects. So, you see how profound that is, that basically, it is an inside job, and you can use this guidance and this counsel and these instructions to free your mind by seeing these conditions that were set up, and beyond that, going deep enough and seeing that really you are not bound by these conditions. Eventually it will teach you that the separation never happened. Of course, you know, that's where this is heading. Not in a verbal way. I bless you because this never happened, but, I, but in an experiential aha sense, you know. So, yeah, it's beautiful to, to open up to that voice, and, and I think most of us have had some experiences with that. She, Helen seemed to, she just kicked and screamed for about, you know, for those seven years. <coughs> and at the end, you know, when it was all over, so to speak, with the course. She was, she was quite proud and protective of her, of her course, she thought it was, but Jesus had to work with her on that too. We'll pop more bubbles there. But also, it was like, at some point, he did say, thank you. Thank you for everything, for hanging in and this and this. But it really wasn't about what you thought it was about. It really wasn't about the course, after all of that. <coughs> and then he said, that what it was really about is, I love you. That's what it was about. That's, some, that's saying something after <laughs> all, that, all the seeming resistance and all the scribing and she tried to, she would leave the notes that she would scribe in, a, in the back of a cab sometime and somebody would find them and mail them back to her. She, I have a, we have a video clip of her talking with her voice, Helen Shuckman's voice, and she said, I just couldn't lose that course. She, I tried, she said. <laughs> she tried to leave it behind, but it was under divine orchestration. We were meant to have that tool. It's just a tool. It's only, I was telling the group in London, it's only a tool to bring you in contact with your internal teacher. It's just, this course is a beginning and not an ending, he says. Henceforth listen to the voice for God and he will direct all subsequent lessons. That's all it's meant to do is send you in the direction of your listening to your internal teacher. <coughs> Not to be a lifetime course student, or, you know, you know, those kind of things can be tempting to think. That's another bubble. <coughs> Identity bubble. Course and Miracles student. Course and Miracles teacher. Well, the ego likes to, to make identity. The ego is the belief that you can make yourself. You can make an identity any way that you want it. So it's always building and making and shifting and changing and... <laughs> rehashing, rehabilitating, but, but we could say that once you start to see that, you know, what you can say is that as you come to this experience, you're just opening and being willing to just stop with these new concepts, you know. It, the Holy Spirit is kind and gentle, so the Holy Spirit will, will 
will give you concepts that are more expansive. And so it's not like you're hurled into the light. You, you know, you come here and you may believe certain things about yourself, certain concepts, and the onion will get peeled. And um, things will fall away. You will outgrow them like a child outgrows toys. And it could be quite rapid. I mean, a lot of you can come here and after however many days or weeks that you're here, you know, it can be very much like you were saying, you know, the, you'll be able to, to really gauge it maybe when you go, or even before you go, you may feel like a loosening, a lightening, like, uh-huh. The more I've watched Malfried over the years, she's been painting and dancing and playing the flute and twirling around, and you weren't doing that at the beginning. You had you were looking at me with like <laughs> suspicious eyes, <laughs> Dad, like that. <laughs> but see, that's how that's the progression. Then you'd go away and then come back, and so yeah, it's like you've come to the clinic. A number of times, and, and it is a, a purifying and a lightening and a loosening that that happens, and um, and really, it's it's just like you're kind of revving up your willingness to just um, come to an admission that I can't make myself the way I want to be. You know, if if we go back to that idea that the Holy Spirit made forgiveness for us to share, it's just like a shared perspective. Really, that's the only thing we can accept. It's like the Holy Spirit's offering us a shared perspective, a different way of looking on the world, from a dreaming position. That's the gift. The Holy Spirit's saying, here's the gift. And to the extent that you can let go of that desire to make more identities or, you know, shift and change and reconfigure, you know. It's just reconfiguring the same old, same old, <laughs> under the name of better. You go back, they say, how are you? What happened? I'm a better person than when I went in. <laughs> huh, okay. <laughs> and the ego's sitting down in the spider web going, that's okay, that's acceptable. You can Long you can be better, you can become a better person as long as you can still try to keep on continuing to become better, which just seems like a pretty good goal. You know, that's basically we consider those are the achievers of the world, the ones that try to make a better self. But you know, in the end, you you can start to see the, that game too, and so to the extent that you're willing to just open up to the forgiven world or the happy dream to the Holy Spirit's perspective, then to that extent you approach healing. Again though, practically speaking, the Holy Spirit will give steps, will give you steps, will give you concepts that you can relate to. So it's more, it's experientially it's more like a ladder. You know, that's why with these devotionals you just had one up in Sweden and then, you know, you get down to the final days and it's kind of, we call it next steps. You know, what are the practical next steps? That's really tuning in to what the Holy Spirit is offering and giving that you can relate to. And that's very, very helpful and very, very practical. And underneath it, you know, you can just start to be willing to be shown um, that you're not, you're not what you th had thought you were. And also, I mean, I, there was a man at the conference named Martin, who's been at the Course for about ten years, and, and he was listening to the parable of David, and he said, okay, I'm not interested in the first five years, tell me the next five years. I want to know from 1991 to 1996. He was like, the next five years. I've heard about the first five, I want the next five. He said, I want to know how you really tuned in to really hear the Spirit's voice in a very refined way. I said, well, it, it was about surrendering control of thinking I could run my life. Because the first five years were studying the Course, Course groups, 
practicing the workbook, blah, 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 blah. Then, in 1991, it was impelled to travel. Oh, travel, that's not something I ever thought of. Travel, eat what's served, sleep wherever you're given a place to stay, go follow the invitations, um, and I will tell you, I will give you the instructions moment by moment. No game plans, no future plans. Just guide you moment by moment. That'll pop you into the Holy Spirit's guidance when you let, have to let go of those parameters of everything you've learned from your past learning. <coughs> about where you're going to stay, what you're going to do, who you're going to, you know, the structure we talk about a career or a, a personal life. People say, are you a morning person or an evening person? Do you like, are you a vegetarian or a meat eater? Are you a male or a female? Or, you know, it's like everything that you think you know about your life is part of a control mechanism. And then the Holy Spirit comes in to say, I can guide you into forgiveness and into the Kingdom of Heaven if you'll let go trying to run the show, and if you let go of trying to run particular aspects of the show. Holy Spirit says, you give me some and then you take them back, or you, you give some and you say, but these are not for you. Don't touch my diet, or don't touch my exercise routine, or don't touch my special relationship with a partner or a child, or parent or an idol hero or something, you know, take the rest. But you know, that's that's how this loosening occurs when you really start to give over the means of controlling the show and trusting and letting this you know it be given to you moment by moment. That's that'll kick it into high gear for sure. So that's what those less those next five years were about, I told him. Staying, staying on course, despite distractions or 